the diamond sutra just relax into sleep people come in discourses and they fall asleep because it is the perfect place never be worried about those who come and tell you you sleep well they must be trying to disturb you they want to disturb you do not be worried go on sleeping you have to go far but in sleep no worries we have not learned the mystery of sleep do you know how much difficulty people are having in keeping themselves awake you just going to sleep relax into the if you can accept it totally if you can accept the sleep totally that will become a great experience you do not know how much difficulty difficulty people are having in keeping themselves awake you just go into sleep relax into it and if you can accept it totally that will become a great experience remember mind creates conflict if you do not sleep the mind says i am feeling like it would be good if i could sleep if you sleep the mind thinks it has missed something you should not do this the mind always creates the conflict that is the very nature of the mind and not only conflict but it creates frictions as well it is never happy with anything drop that mind if sleep comes naturally allow it to take possession of you i said if sleep comes to you naturally and do not be worried about anything if you accept your sleep during the discourse during these meditation sessions accept it and in that very acceptance the mind will disappear you will be hearing the diamond sutra but how can you listen to it remember even when you are trying to listen but there is a conflict conflict remains on the surface mind surface mind agrees something is in agreement with certain things that fall within your understanding and it is in conflict and does not like that which does not fit in your understanding but simultaneously along with the conscious mind there is a subconscious mind that goes on recording everything and then it surfaces when it needs to one of the greatest kashmiri master patanjali who is the scientist of the inner if you follow the sutras of patanjali they are mathematically true and you will attain to that which is necessary patanjali says sleep is just next to samadhi but you are not aware of it that's the only difference the moment you become aware in sleep it becomes a great 
method for transformation. A good sleep, a deep sleep, and samadhi differ in only one sense. In samadhi there is awareness, and sleep there is no awareness. But awareness can happen in sleep as well. Never make trouble for yourself. Also never divide yourself. If sleep is not coming, it is perfectly good. Keep awake. But then it will not be an effort. Certainly it will not be an effort. If sleep is coming, allow it to come, fall asleep, then do not try to keep yourself awake. And I am not saying that if sleep is not coming, you have to try to go to sleep. Whatsoever is happening naturally, allow it to happen. If sleep comes naturally, there is no need to remain awake. Just welcome the sleep and go into it. If sleep is not coming, welcome it again and accept whatsoever be the case. Accept reality as it happens in a certain moment and be available to that moment when it is happening. My whole message is to be utterly in the moment, available to the moment in total acceptance of that moment and whatsoever is happening in that moment. This is desire, I should not be asleep, but why? Is this not a spiritual to sit in a discourse and fall asleep? Why? Sleep is perfectly spiritual. I say sleep is perfectly a spiritual activity, a great spiritual activity. It is as good as sitting there and thinking and dreaming. But if you have not fallen asleep, what are you doing? You are thinking, you are dreaming, you are analyzing every single word that is spoken. Oh, you are hearing. And you remember that you do not hear anything properly. And all your problems, all your misery arise because you are not capable of hearing properly. All rumors, all misery, everything that happens, misunderstanding, that happens because you have not heard it clearly. You have not paid attention. So what is the point if instead of misinterpreting or trying to adjust the words to mean according to your own understanding, it is better to fall asleep. Sleep is perfectly spiritual activity, a great spiritual activity. It is as good as sitting there and thinking, dreaming is. Dreaming is just a primitive form of thinking, more colorful. Others are thinking and you are dreaming. What is the difference? Dream well, sleep well but relax under all circumstances. One day, out of this relaxation, a miracle will happen. Remember, whatsoever you are doing, you have to be totally into it. You have to be relaxed. And the moment you are relaxed, that is the key. And out of this relaxation, you will start becoming aware and alert. But that alertness, that awareness will have a different quality to it. It will not be forced. 
it will not be manipulated by you. It is not manipulated by you or anything else. And it will come. One day suddenly in the middle of the discourse, you will open your eyes, fresh, young, as if you have emerged out of deep slumber. Something you have come out of a deep sleep and something just a word may go, go into your being and transformation happens. I have told you a story yesterday. A man of an advanced age between 65 to 70 was walking down the street. Probably he would have been man of awareness or aware in that particular moment. He passes in front of the house. Probably he hears a feminine voice. Wake up son. The morning has come, the sun has risen, it is time to wake up. Probably that feminine voice of the mother may be trying to wake up her son. Son, it is time to get up, the sun has risen, morning has come. The old man hears these words. In that moment of awareness, suddenly when these words reach, it has a great impact on his consciousness. He returns, but he does not return home. He goes to the temple and outskirts and sits down in meditation. People gathered. They want to know what is this all going on. He said, morning has come, the sun has risen. Do not disturb, it is time to wake up. Time to wake up. One day out of this relaxation, you will start becoming aware and alert. But that alertness, will have a different quality to it. It will not be forced. It will not be manipulated by you. And it will come naturally to you, spontaneously. One day suddenly in the middle of the discourse, you will open your eyes, fresh, young, from the deep sleep, and something, just a word may go into your being. Because when you wake up, for some time you are in a strange situation. You are neither fully awake nor fully asleep. You are on the borderline. This is known as the in field of spirituality it is called Brahm Muhut the moment of great awakening and the word may enter into your being and this will transform you. The whole Diamond Sutra was not needed when Quening heard four lines, that was enough. Sometimes a single word from Buddha is enough. Sometimes a single moment of awareness is enough to transform you. It just goes like an arrow and pierces your heart. And the moment that arrow 
pierces your heart, you are no longer the same. I am speaking. The words are emerging. But these words are simply the container carrying the energy field. And this energy shoots out from its source and comes to you like an arrow and it pierces your heart and you are no longer the same. So never be worried, worried, relax and if you are relaxed to win and you open your eyes, sometimes it is possible there may happen the between there may happen a meeting between you and me. Otherwise, in most of the cases, your mind comes in place in between. The meeting does not happen. Remember, meeting happens in a moment. And if you have relaxed when and you open your eyes, sometimes it is possible there may happen a meeting between you and me. And in that particular meeting, in that particular moment, in that particular gesture, something enters your being. It is in great receptivity something enters you and the process begins. And you will be so fresh from the sleep, unthinking, not knowing who you are, just totally relaxed. And in that moment, a new process will begin. Sometimes it happens in the morning when you wake up. It takes a few seconds for you to recognize who you are. The mind takes time to come back. Mind does not come back immediately when you wake up. Sometimes you cannot even recognize where you are. Suddenly awakened in the middle of the night, Everybody will wonder who he is, where he is and he will take a little time to gather himself together. So it is possible sleeping one day in the middle you will hear my shouting. Wake up, the morning has come. The sun has risen. It is time to wake up. Suddenly, you wake up and you do not know where you are. That is the right moment. The awakening, the understanding, the light, the awakening that the master is enters you. So never be worried about anything. Whatsoever happens, naturally allow it to happen. Everything is accepted. We have our own idea about this and that. About religion. How the spiritual life has to be. And that is where the greatest problem comes in. A total acceptance of all that is happening in and around and being in harmony with that. When misery comes, accept it. And in that very acceptance, the miracle happens. The miracle happens in acceptance. A total acceptance of all that is happening. And in that moment, the ego cannot remain. And you will realize in total acceptance another miracle happens. Slowly and slowly 
if you observe your breathing, it becomes, it slows down. And as breathing slows down, relaxation happens. In the moment of total relaxation, breathing also slows down and it appears as if it is not happening. So breathing is one of the tools that you can use to bring relaxation into you. The other is total acceptance of all that is happening. Naturally the relaxation begins to come. Breathing becomes spontaneous and natural and slows down. And you will find at times as if you are not breathing. It is always difficult for people to see the standpoint of the others, their understanding, their religious beliefs, and this creates a conflict. And this happens all because of the false center, the ego. The conflict has nothing to do with religions, just the ego. Whatsoever is yours has to be the best in the world. Whatsoever is Whatsoever belongs to the other cannot be the best, cannot be allowed to be the best in the world. This mentality you will find everywhere. Your wife is the most beautiful woman or your husband is the most handsome person. You are the greatest man in the world. You may not say so, but you say in thousand and one ways. And whatsoever belongs to you has to be the best. People are just like small children when it comes to understanding. Small children go on fighting. My daddy can lick your daddy anytime. I have heard a small boy was telling another boy, My mother is a great orator. She can speak on any subject for hours. The other responded, That is nothing. My mother is such a great orator that she can speak without any subject for hours. Nobody knows what she is speaking. People go on bragging about things like this. About everything and about their religions too. I have heard one day Mullah Nasruddin's son asked him, Father, if a Muslim leaves his religion and becomes a Hindu or a Christian, what would you call him? Mullah became very angry and he said, That person who has left Islam and entered into other religions is a traitor. He should be shot. This is the greatest sin in the whole world, to change your religion or to betray your religion. He has betrayed his soul. The boy continued with another question. Then, Father, if a Hindu or a Christian becomes a Muslim, what would you call him? Mullah was immediately all smiles. Maybe the Jimmy Carter smile, I guess. He said, that is great. That man is really wise. That man should be welcomed and respected and honored. He knows what truth is. He is courageous. He is a convert, my son. 
Now the thing has changed. If a Muslim becomes Hindu or Christian, he is a traitor. And if a Hindu or a Christian becomes a Muslim, he is a convert and he is a great man and he should be honored and respected. He is wise because he has recognized what is the real religion. This is lack of awareness. This is how our ego functions. And this is the reason why religions, rather than bringing peace and harmony to the world, they have caused, they have been the cause of wars. Many more people have been killed in the name of religion than in any other name. Not even politicians have been able to surpass the so-called religious people in murder. The greatest murderers have been the churches and the mosques and the temples. This ugliness has to be dropped. If we accept religiousness, if we accept everything totally as it is and relax into it, there will be a greater harmony. Remember your thinking is a personal choice, your religious understanding is a personal choice. If someone does not like a rose flower, do you want to kill him? Or do you say that he is ugly because he does not like a rose flower? No, you consider this natural. You do not say that he is wrong. You say that is his choice. He does not like the rose flower, it is finished. I like the rose flower, but it is a question of individual liking. There is no question of truth or untruth in it. There is no question of arg arguing about it. And there is no reason to prove why I do not like the rose. If I do not like the rose, that is it. A full stop has come. If you like, that is your choice. There is no conflict. Religion should always be like this. The understanding should be like this. If you fall asleep in the discourse, no one should try to wake you up. If you see you are in a discourse and you find somebody is sleeping, do not try to wake him up. Accept as it is. Relax. It is quite natural. Someone likes to sleep, the other likes to remain awake. Someone likes Jesus, it is perfectly beautiful. Another one likes Buddha, someone likes Krishna. All these are individual choices. A religion should not be anything to be imposed or anything that has to do with birth. It is a question of pure liking and individual choice. Only in that case, in that case of total awareness, there will be relaxation. And when there is relaxation, there will be peace within you. There will be harmony within you because you have accepted that as it is. Then there will be no conflict. Also there will be no unnecessary arguing which goes on and on down the centuries. Thus instead of praying, people go on arguing and the whole energy that they put to argument, it should have been put into prayer. They would have known what God is or what is the religion of God. 
Do you know what is the religion of God? But they go on arguing. Great debates continue. And nothing is ever proved because nothing can be proved. I was lucky at a very early age of 9 or 10 when I inquired from my grandmother, the Sufi master, what is my religion? She told me, your religion is the same as that of God. But it was not an answer. Indeed, it was an indirect answer and it was creating an insatiable quest to inquire. A new journey was to begin. When I asked what is the religion of God, I was told, she told me you asked too many questions. You have to discover that on your own. And with this kind of understanding, a new journey begins. If you like Jesus, it is just like when you fall in love with a woman. You cannot prove anything. This is your choice. And there is a particular composition of a Sufi poet, Alama Iqbal, that says, yesterday morning I met Jibreel salam, the mystical wanderer according to Sufis which has a parallel in Hinduism as Narak. Yesterday morning I met Jibreel salam, and he said, one who is enslaved by wisdom. One who is enslaved by wisdom, by the mind, do not accept that heart. Jo aklaka gulam ho, one who is slave to the mind, Slave to his understanding, do not accept that heart because it cannot take you far. It will certainly not take you far. It's a great insight. And if we understand a single word of this, a new process begins. And whatsoever you prove that whether he should like Jesus or not, it will look foolish to others. If you say to others, look at her nose, how long and how beautiful it looks. People will say that looks ugly. It is out of shape. It is too big. And the face is not in proportion. This is how things go on and on. And there is no way to prove your liking. Somebody likes Jesus and somebody else likes Buddha. Thank you. It's a very good choice. Whatsoever, whosoever you like, be in total acceptance with it. And to the moment you have, to have totally accepted, that opens your path. This is like falling in love. You need not prove it. And if you try to prove it, you will look fool to others. That is how it looks. Hindus think people who are in love with Jesus are foolish. What is there in that man? If you ask Hindus, they will have a beautiful theory of karma. They will say you suffer only because you have done wrong in your past lives. Why was Jesus crucified? He must have done great sin. Otherwise, why was he crucified? 
Krishna is not crucified, Ram is not crucified. Why is Jesus crucified? He must have been a sinner. If you ask a Krishna about Krishna playing upon the flute, it looks so beautiful and Jesus on the cross looks so bad. And he will say, what are you talking about? This world is in such a misery. And this man Krishna must have been of a very stony heart. He goes on playing on a flute. And people are dying and people are in misery. And there is death and disease. And this man is playing on the flute. He must have been a very rock-like heart. He has no heart. If he had any heart, he would have sacrificed himself for the downtrodden, the oppressed, and for those who are in misery. Look at Jesus. He is the Savior. He died for us so that we can be redeemed. This Krishna looks sham. If you ask a Hindu who follows Krishna, he will say, what are you talking about? There is no misery. All misery is illusion. If people are suffering, they are suffering for their sins. Nobody else can redeem them. And only redeemer that can be of any help is one who brings joy to the world. Only joy is the healing force. He can redeem you. I have heard a conversation going on between three religious people. One was a Christian, one was a Hindu, another was a Muslim, and the last one was the most interesting one was a Jew. So the interviewer asked a Hindu, who according to you is the greatest man? The Hindu said, of course, Krishna and Ram, who else could be? Then they, he turned towards the Christian. Who you think is the greatest man in the universe? said, of course, Jesus. No one else can take his place. Then they asked the Muslim, who is the greatest man? Of course, beyond doubt. Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And you must remember his kalma. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Even God chants that kalma. Then the reporter turns towards the Jew. Sir, who according to you is the greatest man? The Jew said, of course. Jesus, but in a faint voice, of course, Jesus. So the reporter got very surprised and he asked, Are you sure, sir, Jesus is the greatest man? Your voice seemed a little fainting. He said, I know in the heart of hearts, Moses is the greatest man. But business is business. Business is business. Jesus is the mascot, business mascot for Jews. You look into the world, most of the businesses are owned by Jews. And I was surprised. The supermarkets and the big businesses they remain open even on the Christmas day. Hindus say, if somebody is crying and you sit by the side and they start crying as well, you can redeem him. Crying is doubled. Somebody is sick and out of sympathy, you lie down by his side, you are helping. To help, you have to be healthy. If you want to save someone from drowning, you must know the swimming. 
to help you have to be healthy. You need not fall sick. Krishna is healthy. Krishna is joy. The world is so much full of misery. That's why he brings the food. Everybody is carrying already his own cross. What is there in carrying an extra cross? Everybody is carrying a cross. A flute is needed. Now these are the ways and everybody can go on and on arguing for and against. Remember religion is a love of fear. I emphatically say religion is a love of fear. It has nothing to do with intellect. And as Alama Iqbal says, Jibreel told him, one who is slave to intellect never accepts that heart. It has nothing to do with religion. It is like falling in love with whomsoever you have fallen in love, that is your way. Go through it and that alone becomes your door. That alone becomes your path. And you remember as you walk, you create your own thoroughfare. The road is there, but the road is stationary and you walk on the road path is created, the, that path will be your own dynamic and that will take you to the ultimate. Love is the door and then it is irrelevant with whom you have fallen in love. Love redeems neither Jesus nor Krishna nor Muhammad. This is an illusion that Jesus is the Savior. Your love for Jesus is the Savior. Your love for Krishna is Savior. Indeed, love redeems. What in love? Love is the only redeeming force. Love is the way that takes you to life 